I'm Rita Kakati Shah, your host for The Uma Show. Welcome to your one-stop journey for feeling empowered. We're a platform for change. We build confidence. We are your voice. We want you to be bold, be you, be Uma. Today, we're exploring leadership through music, and I'm so excited to be joined by goddess of go-getting, Sunita Kompuyan, who is joining us from Mumbai, and she is an Indo-fusion violinist and leadership trainer. Welcome, Sunita Ba. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Rita. Thank you for inviting me. It's so wonderful to be on the Uma show for MANA TV. Oh, it's absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us again. So let's start by talking through us about your heritage, your childhood, and how you grew up. I grew up in a small town, but a beautiful one, in Upper Assam, in the northeast of India, called Dibrugarh. And it's one of those rare towns where the tea estate grows into the town. So when we used to go to school, we used to have the tea estate shrub, you know, both sides of the road to the school. So one of those rare towns of Assam, Upper Assam, you know, Assam is Lower Assam and Upper Assam, depending on the flow of the Brahmaputra. Then you've got a North Bank and the South Bank. The Upper Assam is up towards the north, and that's where Dibrugar is. I did my schooling there, and it's one of the most beautiful, picturesque towns on the banks of the Brahmaputra. Oh, lovely. Love that, and, and the picturesque glory that you've just described there. So you grew up with music from childhood. In fact, started playing the violin with, as a duet with your mother. Can you walk us through your musical journey and how you balance that later with your education? Um, well, like, uh, you know, as you would know, Rita, that my mother is Minoti Count, a very well-known violinist of the Northeast in Assam. In those days, she played the violin, a Western instrument, of course, in Hindustani classical style. So when she was eight and a half to 10 or nine years old, she saw a dream that she wanted to play an instrument which looked like the violin, which was quite amazing. And her grandfather, her grandfather got her a violin. And, and then she started learning from Srinidhar Sharma locally in Jorhat. And then she started playing the violin, then learned from a guru eventually. And then she started teaching me when I was eight years old. And I had no choice. I was forced to learn the violin. And uh, it's a very overwhelming instrument. Right. So I wasn't very keen to dedicate so much of my childhood into the violin, but my mother was very clear that she wanted me to do the riyas, learn the craft, learn the technique, the discipline, the training and the exams and the studies of music went along till I was 25 years of age. And she made me do my master's just before I got married. She said, there's one more thing you need to do that complete your master's in music. And I think that one which I resisted the most that milestone of studying music of the 15th century, 16th century, that music exam, which had a paper on music therapy and its impact on the mind and body, has today given me an identity and a new lease to life with, the, with violin and music. So as much as I resisted her, you know, her, her entire discipline of teaching me the craft today, I think I am because she is my mother. Mm, I love that. It's almost like, you know, the wisdom of our ancestors and how that sort of, you know, narrates our paths forward and how for you that was your path forward, but you didn't know it back then. So now fast forward to today, you are a renowned musician, a sought after leadership trainer as well, not just in India, not just in Assam, but around the world. Can you tell us about your work and how you got into that field in the first place? Well, um, like I said, music was like the religion in the family and uh, hence it was, it was, granted that taking for granted I would do the violin and then when uh, my mother took me to her guru he said that it's very good that you're making her study because academics mm -hmm. is very important he felt that artists and musicians should be thinking professionals and then use their craft so that was very he was very progressive and hence I kept studying and did my master's in business administration I took up human resources and of course, eventually, when you do an MBA, you come to a city like Mumbai after I got married to my husband, Suraji. We came to Bombay and we, I took up a job because I had not yet started my independent music career. I was playing with my mother till then, accompanying her and doing a bit of small little music pieces here and there. But independently, when I came to Bombay, uh, Mumbai, I, I didn't have any, I couldn't do a livelihood out of music just like that. You don't get a ready-made stage in a city like Bombay. Being a classical musician at that time, I'm talking about 20 years back, so I took up a job in, a, in an organization. It was a ITES organization outsourcing to the BPO uh, uh, outfit where American Express 
was doing a large project on customer service where hundreds of jobs were being outsourced to India and I was the training manager for that. And then I realized that, you know, internalizing, being calm and composed, being holistic in, holistic in one's approach to be able to deal with people were the biggest opportunities I saw in the young Indian corporate professional. And that's when I realized that the benefits of music, the understanding of the discipline, the creativity, the inclusion, the sensitivity, the listening, the camaraderie that musicians share with each other, all these concepts would go a long way in inculcating the value of the softer mm -hmm. side of leadership, which became the most powerful side as we go along. They say that chief executives need to know people more than their craft today. So that's when I started blending both my musical career or my musical passion with my work in human resources and through from the from the corporate boardroom to the stage I started flitting it became a very easy journey from the stage to the training room and back into the training room and back onto international stages so I don't have an exact time as to when it they both blurred together but my concert career also started developing also started blooming then of course I, I started staying in Bombay interacting with musicians I travel with my work and that gave me more insight into new musical genres and sounds in the UK, in Scotland, in New York, in US. And I think today, both my concert stage and my training room is learns from each other. I take, mm -hmm. I take one learning into the other and I try to create a synergy as much as I can. Mm, thank you for sharing that incredible um, insight for us because to your point, you know, you've actually merged your two passions and you are continuing to learn because that's what music's about. That's what leadership is about. And that's what business training is about as well. So I love how you just merge them together. You've made it work for you, your two passions, and they work so closely together. Who would have known until you actually brought these two loves together? So thanks for sharing that. And you've actually had many accomplishments through the work that you do, including winning national and international awards, in music and leadership, including the Women's Achievement Award, the Indira Gandhi Priya Darshini Award for Excellence, and so many more. What's next on the horizon for you? I think I need to create, uh, you know, I was never in the digital space I shared with you mm -hmm. earlier. I, I always was complacent. I was always in the physical space. I always thought that I don't need to clutter the internet because let me be one artist or a professional who just, just, specializes on the stage the energy the physical energy of doing an engagement of music to give a message to the violin right that was my main mission and hence communities children corporate audiences uh, you know normal audiences were my thriving uh, uh, you know areas of doing my music but then I realized especially after the pandemic that being digitally pre present is important to keep your legacy behind and hence my father who passed away to COVID six months back always wanted me to do an album with my son and then mm. he used to ask me what are these awards like Grammy why don't I see you doing all these things I only see you doing things that are away from all of this I said Papa I never went into that path but I think I will do an album with my son and I would like to take on the whole whole concept of music leadership social change another level of mental health and how it helps the mind and body how scientific mm. music is how important it is to inculcate the habit of the arts for young children, for young professionals, because the more they are soothed, the more they are healthy internally and the mind drives the body, the more their mind is composed. It helps them become better professionals. It helps you to create a better society around you. And, you know, we're talking about a circular economy. I feel that you've got to create circular societies and the arts and music can be a great medium to be able to driving social change, inclusion, mm -hmm. empathy for each other. So hence my mission is to ensure that mental health becomes an integral part of all, uh, you know, all the audiences that I, I try to entertain with my music. I'd like to also go a step further and help them with their mental conditioning, their mental health and their overall well-being through music. Mm -hmm. Oh, so well said. And I love that. And I love how history has repeated itself because now your son is a musician as well. Um, and I believe he plays the piano. Does he also play the violin as well? Or you know, uh, No, not all people. A lot of my family members tell me, why didn't you teach him the violin? I said, I don't have that selflessness that my mother had to teach the violin is one of the most difficult instruments to teach, especially mm -hmm. to a young child. And I was, I think I was quite self-centered in my younger days uh, when mm -hmm. he was small to be able to 
be that persuasive, being so diligent, consistent in the commitment to teach a child violin, because violin is not just one instrument to mother, violin is two instruments. Mm. You have the bow and you have the violin. So it's two instruments together that you have to yeah. play. So which means balance, motor, uh, you know, motor, being agile, being alert, there's a lot that goes into, you know, using both your hands and it's a very difficult technique to teach. So I think I, I didn't want to take up that whole huge responsibility. So I'm so happy he's taken piano. I don't know anything about the piano. He doesn't know anything about the violin. The only time we connect with each other is to the universality of music and the seven notes. So that's a really nice space to be together in. I love that connection that you built. That's amazing. So now switching gear a little bit. Um, challenges are a part of life, but it's really how we deal with them that sets us apart as leaders, specifically in the world we're in today. Could you share either a personal or professional example um, of a challenge and how you overcame it? Um, earlier, the challenge was the identity of the violin. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was always looked upon, oh, she's a classical musician. Mm -hmm. she's, she, they would say that she's very good. But then I think we'll give her earlier in the evening because we want to have entertainers later in the night. Mm -hmm. so that was always the, um, the, the image that violin had. Wow. Um, uh, you're, you're right. And especially in Assam, uh, where, um, you know, I come from there originally, and uh, there's this festival called Bihu, and everyone dances and sings for about two months. I was always invited to perform in the earlier times in the stage, because I never put the headlining sessions. Reason mm -hmm. being, again, violinist, you know, you're supposed to be just, you know, you're supposed to be your own world and keep playing. But then I wanted to break that myth that the violin has the power, the, the repertoire to play from classical to folk, to melancholy, to jazz, to rock, to all kinds of music. And hence, when I got the opportunity and invitation to play as an spoke on the violin, I think that was the turning point of using the violin for a larger audience. And I mm -hmm. tried to prove that you can entertain, you can make people dance. And the timing started getting later and later that I was invited to start sometimes start playing at 10 in the night and wow. uh, which was very challenging so that was <laughs> one. And, and the other challenge was the whole using music as a tool so a lot of times mm -hmm. people use thought that my workshop was a music workshop it's actually a leadership workshop with a message I used music just as a tool that took a little time to socialize but been very lucky to have very good um, uh, collaborators very good mentors very, very great, very good HR heads across organizations who embraced the concept of music. And hence, uh, you know, I got a lot of opportunity to try out my module over varied audiences across uh, different countries. So that was an opportunity. And I think I learned from every opportunity that I got through that. Uh, right. So well said. Um, thank you for sharing that. What advice would you give to any young girls or women wanting to follow in your footsteps? I would say that if you can, you know, if you really want to be um, uh, uh, in a particular profession, um, of course, I never followed Instagram and YouTube because I said I never had any recorded material. All mm -hmm. most of the material I have recorded is done by someone else when I played for probably for a live performance. Um, if you can create a niche and and create a specialization in any form. Of profession that you take whether it's music or the arts or human resources like what you are doing you know you're creating a different niche in the way you are dealing with you're creating um these 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 forums for women and initiatives and training so we can create a niche the world it may not be a very large world but wherever you are you are in a much better space uh, you don't compete with anyone but yourself i think that's a great space to be um, uh, I, think, you know, I don't have to compete with anyone else at this, at this point because I'm using music as a mission to be able mm -hmm. to impact people's minds and to be able to change a few mindsets and attitudes in the corporate world. So, so that's the kind of niche. You've got to find out a niche. And the second thing is that you have to build your craft very deep. Mm -hmm. Anything that you do, whether it's any kind of profession, whether you want to be a chef or a musician, or a homemaker, we've got to be very deep in our craft and we've got to strategize very well to be up there. Mm, absolutely, really, really well said. Um, before we let you go, I, rem I did see a peek of your violin and your bow <laughs> earlier on. So we would love to hear a quick piece from you. If you could play a few lines, it would be great. Let me just put on the Tanpura. The Tanpura 
So this is a very old violin that I have. It's an antique, it's a German violin, which my mother gave me many, many years ago when I was a very little girl from Kolkata. It's a, it's a reassembled piece from Kolkata, from the famous violin makers, Mondov and Sons. And uh, I think this is like part of my own self. I've never held even my son on my arms as much as I've held this violin over the years. <laughs> I'd like to do two quick pieces. Do we have time for that? Sure, go for it. The first is, especially in this world today, how you know the world has become. It's it's become so so challenging, uh, and all, a lot of times I feel alone. And I've been working with the space of mental health the last few years. I this this song of Tagore really resonates very well with people like us who are trying to do something on our own path. And you you're going to. Be, you, you, you can uh, you know, resonate with that too, with all that you do, uh, Rita. If you have no one to walk with you, you've got to walk alone, but you've got to keep walking your path. Jodi to redakshunike naya shetave akla choluri taube akla cholo, akla cholo, akla cholo Oh, beautiful. That was so precious to hear. <laughs> and the next one, of course, we've talked about Assam a lot. And we both happen to come from there. Mm -hmm. But this is a song for the world. It's a song for all the river, rivers. It's a song for Mother Earth. And the Dr. Bhupen Hazarika, the part of the Brahmaputra, who was awarded the highest civilian honor uh, after he passed away last year. Bharat Ratna. He shouted to the rivers and said, why do you keep flowing when there's so much unrest around you, when the world is degrading uh, around both your banks, but you keep still, still keep flowing and flowing. Vistar hai apar praja dono par Kare hahakar nishabda sada O ganga tu, o ganga bhegati ho kyun in Assamese, Vistirna Dupar, Vistirna Parare, Aham Kajanare, Ha Ha Kar Kuni, Nikhap De Nirabe, Good Halloween to me, Good Halloween to a year. Thank you. 
Wow, that's so beautiful. And you just have this ability to make the music just come alive. That's incredible. Wow. Thank you so much, Sunita Ba, for sharing your music and your incredible journey with us today. And thank you to our viewers for joining us on our empowerment journey. We want you all to embrace the inner goddess of go getting inside each of you. We want you to be bold, be you, be Uma.